Catherine JC from Yoga Studio Satya, and welcome to our third practice, which is part of the larger workshop, the Rush Rockin' Progressive Cleanse. Uh, today's practice is all about steadiness. We want to become steadfast in our practice, uh, and at this time of year, our practice is turning our energy inward, right? So there's a certain degree of intensity that comes from that. Uh, energy being turned inward into our own cleansing and healing and just rejuvenating, bringing the level of all of our batteries back up. Um, and that's just balancing for all the normal outward energetic things that we do all day. Thinking, speaking, acting, doing for others, taking care of our family, taking care of our career, taking care of our homes. So it's time to hit, um, take a break, draw a line in the sand about all of that and bring it into balance so that we can actually fuel and have even greater energy for more outward service. So if we're going to recognize the divine and offer to it in all those things around us, we must also offer to it within us. And so um, at the three quarters point of any um, endeavor, we start to question, we start to waver, we start to wobble, we start to wonder why it is we're doing this at all. Because right at the moment that something is about to fruit, it always becomes challenging. So I race, and at about three quarters through every race, when you're really suffering, you sort of wonder, why do I do this? Why don't I take up needlepoint? And frankly, when I'm doing needlepoint, about three quarters of the way through, I start to get impatient, and I start to wonder, why am I doing this? Why don't I go outside and run? <laughs> so um, there comes a challenging point. In any practice, you will get to the point where you're tempted to waver and you're tempted to wobble. So the secret is to uh, find not a balance between opposites, but a pulsation, a dance between effort and surrender. The effort to sustain you there and the surrender to find a measure of comfort in what it is that you're doing. Right? Comfort, not complacency. An effort not forcing. Alright, so on that note, take a comfortable seat, turn your inner thighs down, inward spiral, sit tall, shoulders up and back, head over the spine, close your eyes and breathe. As we turn our energy inward, may we sustain this practice. May we become steadfast. So that we can move through the difficult parts, stay with them, come into relationship with whatever truths those are. And feel that pulsation of effort and release steadiness and comfort that carries us through all of our most challenging moments in life. Hands together in front of your heart, please release your breath. Enjoy your inhale. Exhale by your head toward your heart. And releasing again, release your hands, lift your chin, and softly open your eyes. Wonderful. Alright, let's warm up. Come to all fours. Let your spine undulate with your breath. Cat pose.
thread the needle and then yarn up. And exhale through it. Take a breath. And release. Back to the middle. Other side. Arm up. And exhale to fist. for child's pose, take a breath. And in some poses, a comfort is very obvious. In child's pose, there is an obvious surrender. There's a relaxation. And it's very easy to tap into. Tap into that feeling in your child's pose so we get acquainted with it, so we can find it even when it's wearing the disguise of a difficult standing pose. your toes, make your way to downward facing dog. And you can walk your dog a little bit here to open up your calves. One definition of love for your body is to be with that body, to stay with it in its most intense moments, not to shirk away from those moments, but to sort of suffer together to bear that intensity and look at that truth no matter what it looks like and just be really present in each moment. And there's a comfort in simply being present. When your inhale comes plank, on your exhale chaturanga, on your inhale bhujangasana or cobra, turn your toes downward facing dog. Walk to the top of your mat, forward fold. Of course, in your forward fold, you don't have to touch the floor. And you can bend your knees. Depends on the length of your legs and arms and the length of your hamstrings. Your feet wide. Still parallel, about shoulder width apart. We'll do three pumps. Squat all the way down as deep as you can. Inhale, lift your sitting bones as high as you can. Drop your sitting bones as low as you can. Keep your sitting bones as high as you can. One more. And then bend your knees to a nice halfway place. Slide your belly button to the right as you open your sitting bone on the opposite side to the left. So it's not a twist at this point, it's a straight slide across. And you're dragging your belly button this way to widen this whole hip and corner of your back the other way and create a lateral stretch across your back. And go the other way. Come back to the middle. And now we do twist. Bend your knees a little bit more if you need to. Fingertips out. Look under your arm. As your chest goes this way, your armpit goes that way, opening you up into a deeper twist without letting your hips swivel around and do something crazy. And other side. And come to the middle. Feet normal width apart. If you're a basic practitioner, do your feet parallel to each other, hip width apart, so your thigh bones and shin bones are parallel. If you're a more advanced practitioner, you may want to do a more classical stance with big toe knuckles are touching. There's a gap between the heel to maintain that parallel feet. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, hands together. Three. today and steadfastness is to stay in the pose, bow, not to check out, 
pick your hair and check your cell phone and look at your watch between poses. Stay in the pose, whether we're holding, whether we're between poses, whether we're moving into a pose. The challenge is to stay present and to allow your practice those very subtle undulations between a little more and a little less, and a little more and a little less. Just enough rest, release, and surrender that we can do a little more. Without pushing too far, we go right back into surrender so that we can find comfort, we can find that happy place. Inhale, stretch your spine. Exhale, step back, stay more facing down. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Hold this chaturanga for three breaths. Use your knees if you need to. Keep your shoulders back and your short ribs in. Release lightly to the ground. Press the tops of your feet. Curl back. Bring your toes forward facing down. Bring your right foot forward for high lunge. Make a 90 degree bend on that front leg. Challenge yourself to get as close to that 90 degree as is possible for you right now. Straighten the back leg all the way. In order to cultivate steadfastness, we have to invite a certain amount of intensity in our practice. Right, we want to be steady when things are intense. So if we don't practice when things are intense, we won't be prepared. We won't know how to find comfort and surrender and ease and pulsate in a difficult place. Leave your feet where they are and pivot. You're doing high lunge on the other side. Rest your fingers up slightly on the floor. So the intensity is not in your upper body, in the lower body and the abdominals. And pivot it again. Keep your ankle straight. So as you look down your shin bone through the middle of your ankle, we should see a straight line, not a curved line. Keep the ankle straight and open your knee from the hip. Keep the back leg straight. Open your hip. straight to the center of the ankle, even when it tips to the side. Now the line is at an angle, but it's still a straight line. It's not a curved line, letting your ankle bone flop toward the floor. Straight line, back leg straight, tuck your short ribs in and bow. So that's kidney loop. When the short ribs come in, you'll notice the ribs poof out in the back, they shift slightly up, and they make a circle here. An energetic circle through the body. Step forward, forward fold. Root your tailbone, inhale, stretch up. Take one wrist and stretch to the side. Take your other wrist, stretch to the other side. It's half moon. And down forward. Right, it's crescent moon, not half moon. Lengthen your spine. Step back to downward facing dog. Exhale, chaturanga, draw your arm bones back and keep them back, hold. Release, cobra pose. Down facing down. And bring your left leg forward into pigeon crest. And it will be varying intensity for different people in this pose. Some people plop right into it, right? And their steadfastness in that point comes more from the drawing in muscularly, the effort to hold your body up, and then the surrender to stay in that pose, to be with it. 
right? So there's intensity there and there's sensation there. And we surrender into that and say, I'm not going to run away. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to accept what you are. And for those of you that are a little tighter, right, there's still that muscular work to squeeze your legs together, hack your belly in and hold yourself up. But the surrender comes more in the intensity of the opening. Right? We love it. We love our tight little hips by staying with them, by being fully present in the pose. And then we can undulate in and out of the pose. It's very, very subtle. Right? I shouldn't see you. You stay with it and relax into it. And we'll find comfort in the pose as we stay with it. We'll never find comfort in it if we shirk away and run away and bail at the first sight of intensity. It's not about punishing yourself. It's about being there long enough to see the truth of yourself. To fill the vessel of your body with the energy that will turn you inward. And give it some time to do some cleaning and do some maintenance and bring some healing. Step back to now we're facing dog. Switch legs. There's this delicate um, biokinetic dance that goes on in the muscles when we stretch them. If we don't engage the muscle, the muscle is not cued to release into a stretch. So we have to engage, there has to be effort to create that surrender in the muscles into the stretch where we find comfort, where we find opening in this release. And then as the muscle gets longer, we have to maintain, we have to engage again pulsating into effort to cue the body to release into stretch. And then we maintain the effort and the body releases. So as we stay with the pose and allow it to pulsate, allow ourselves to, to get to know that line by homing in on it, right? At first we don't know what we're doing and as we get closer we get more and more and more subtle and we can fluctuate right along that line, and we call that your edge. Where's your edge? It's the moment right now in which we're being present. So back to down our facing dog. We want to step or hop to forward fold. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, bow. Reach your tailbone, stretch up. Hands together in front of your heart. Breathe. Release. One more, arms up. Exhale, bow. Lengthen your spine. Step back to downward facing dog. And this time, let's move through all fours. Bring your right leg forward into low lunge. If you'd like to cushion your knee, We want to be steadfast, not crazy. Grinding your kneecap into the hard ground is not um, a sign of being steadfast. It's a violence toward the body. It's unnecessary. Make an offering of your right hip toward the floor and settle it back. Stick out your butt a little bit. Scoop your tailbone and lunge forward. Everything we've learned in our past lessons about turning our energy inward and all of that still applies. It's a cumulative lesson. Try your shoulders up, and not just your shoulders, but your whole torso shrugs up with those shoulders. So if your shoulder blades are stuck to your back, then when you shrug, you're going to bring your back with it. And then you can take your left elbow, cross it over, engage your abs, flex your spine, get your armpit a little closer to your knee, find that edge. So it's a rotation and a flexion. Bring your palms together. Turn your low belly just above your pubic bone, popping your hip down, and your middle belly, and your waist, and your chest, 
Puff your hip down. In your shoulders, in your throat. Puff your hip down. Bring your hands together. Maintain steadiness. Pulsate into that release and comfort, even at your edge, the edge of difficulty. Feel fully present if you can find it. By finding comfort, we can maintain, we can hang on. Switch legs, do the other side. Keep your focus between poses. Train yourself. More steadfastness. Instead of an interval, this is more of an endurance thing. This is more of a long run rather than going out and doing a series of sprints. Head back, scoop your tailbone, lunge forward. Keep offering the left hip down by the same token. Don't let this right thigh bone press into the hip flexor. Keep it pulling back more toward the glute. Twist. Use your belly muscles to twist more and flex more. Bringing your right armpit closer to your left knee. Be steady. Both legs. Offer your surrender into the pose to receive comfort. Which that edge that we talked about is a moving edge. We're fully present in the pose and that edge moves, we know it, we feel it, we can respond appropriately to it, we can fluctuate with it. So steadiness does not mean not fluctuating. There's an integrity and a steadiness in our proximity to the edge, and getting closer and closer to that edge, but we respond very fluidly as that edge moves. Walk to the top of your mat, pull the fold. Reach your tailbone and your house stretch up. Hands together. Breathe. Release. Arms back. Exhale, bow. Lengthen your spine. Step back with your right leg into high lunge. So this one, go ahead and spin your foot down so your back toes point to the side, front toes face forward, and shorten your stance just a little bit. In fact, the back toes are not going to point straight to the side. They're clocked just a little bit forward. Come on up. Stay out your butt. Scoop your tailbone. And keeping the back leg very, very strong, bend the front knee. Hip squares to whatever wall you're facing. And bend, 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 bend until you find perfect 90 degrees in the front leg. Draw your energy inward. Take your shoulders back. Let your legs shake. Adjust your edge if you need to. Keep both shoulders back. Reach up. Squeeze your elbows all the way straight. But without interlacing, press your fingers together. Seal your hands against each other. Draw your armpits back. So without sticking your head out, your arm bones are behind your ears. Without bailing, don't release out of the pose, release into the pose. Let your legs be buoyed and comforted by the support and the lift in your low belly. That's Uddiyana Bandha. stance as you plant your foot in the back. Again, that foot won't point straight to the side. It'll be clocked slightly forward. Bring your hands to your hips. 
let out. So the back thigh is strong and lifted. Scoop your tailbone. Find your strength. Right? We don't want to go into the intensity. We don't want to surrender into that intensity. But we'll find if we do, we receive comfort. Yes, it's intense. It can be an intensely comfortable. We can find a relief in our discomfort. That might be a better way to put it. Draw your energy in from your upper abs and your lower abs. Take your shoulders back. Reach up. Fingers press, but don't interlace. Elbows straight. Draw your arm pits back so your upper arm bone goes behind your ear. And your hips square as best you can to the front wall. Your knee bends as deeply toward 90 degrees as you can. Press the top of your shin bone into that front wall. And touch the earth. Step back. Take a moment in child's pose. Come back to all fours. When we're fully present in our comfort, we can actually be more effective and efficient in our comfort. Just like when we're fully effective in our actions and fully present and we show up fully, both in our action and in our non-action. So back to the facing dog. Bring your left foot forward, high lunge. Turn your back foot down. This time stay full length and point your toes directly to the side. So it's 90 degrees between the front foot and the back foot. Straighten your legs. Find your effort. Draw up with your legs and your belly. Draw the energy in. Take your shoulders back. Surrender. Right? Release into that sensation of your muscles working. It's kind of acceptance. You know my muscles are working. Okay. I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to release and go, oh, my muscles had to work. Hug. Surrender into that. Hug. Surrender into that. Take your arm bones back. Turn your palms upward so your shoulder blades spiral down into your back. Keep the shoulder blades and flip the hands back over. Bring your right hand, sorry, left hand down behind your shin. Release into the pose. And this is Otita Trikonasana. It's in a triangle pose. Hug your top ribs together slightly to lengthen your bottom ribs apart. So that your armpit stretches away from your hip and your hip stretches away from your armpit. Create a very long side body. Bend your knee. Come through high lunge. Step to downward facing dog. Switch to the other side. Back to double facing dog. Bring your left foot forward. I lunge on the first side again. Bring your back foot down. And we're going to start this pose 
with your hand on your front knee. So I'm slightly bigger than 90 degrees in this angle here. My elbow's leaning on my front knee. Modification. Back foot points straight to the side. Front foot points straight forward. Fire your thighs back. Up with your muscles. Scoop your tail. So yeah, it's the lower and upper belly drawing the, the spilling energy inward. And bend your front knee. Right, we want to hold back, but surrender fully into the pose. Okay, the effort lovingly and surrender fully into the pose, not out of it. This is not a shirking, this is not bailing. Draw your thigh bone back on that side of your uh, hip crease and draw your belly back on this side of the hip crease and feel the stretch of your psoas across that hip crease. You'll feel it all the way up into the abdomen and you'll feel it sometimes in your back where that psoas attaches. Continue to draw the energy in your lower belly and your upper belly so we can surrender more deeply into this thigh and achieve that perfect 90 degrees. Bring your right left hand down to the floor. Stretch your right hand for me. Draw the armpit in and then reach up. And again, take your armpit back so your arm bone gets behind your ear so that if you look up toward the ceiling, you see the ceiling and not your arm. Squeeze that elbow all the way straight. Stretch the left side back. And at the same time, stretch the left belly back. So we're stretching over the hip crease, back in the thigh, back in the belly, and create a stretch there, an opening. Stretch your top arm over. And then lightly with your right fingertips, bend your knee so you can place those fingertips lightly on the ground. Release into the pose. That means find comfort without becoming heavy into that right hand. That would be releasing out of the pose. Stay with your breath. Navigate your head. And release. All the way back to downward facing dog. And take a break in child's pose. And as you're ready, come out of child's pose, we're dealing with downward facing dog and forward fold. Stretch. Exhale, hands together. Take a breath and release. This time, right leg back. And your hips will tend to turn toward the side of your mat. So pivot. So your hips are square to the front edge of your mat. And your head like straight forward. And with your legs, draw your energy in. Bow forward. So make sure as you bow forward, your hips 
hips don't swivel, but keep your rear end facing straight back. Keep the pressure in the ball of your foot even across the whole ball of your foot. So as much pressure into the big toe ball now as there is in the pinky toe ball now. You'll probably have to push through the inner edge and pull through the outer edge to create that level surface. Same thing in the back foot. Push through the inner edge, lift through the outer edge. So the ball of your foot has even pressure, even extension. Extend your spine long. Exhale back. each fiber to engage and lift. And as you exhale, offer the right hip down to the floor. Surrender as if it's an act of courage to release into that sensation and be fully present. Right? We feel opening, we feel our muscles working. It's not exactly the bark of lounger. And we summon the courage to release into that, to see what must be seen and feel what must be felt. And to find a measure of comfort as we work our way through that. Right? We feel it and we see it and we know it because it's true. Another inhale. Rise. Step forward. Side. So you can adjust your stance. You don't want to be too crossed. We're going to now get your hips square. You don't want to be too long. Or this becomes ridiculous. Right? The length of your stance has to do with the length of your hamstrings. So if you're tight in your hamstrings, shorten your stance up a little bit. So the way to love your body is to practice in a way that's appropriate for the body. Do the practice that fits your body now and show up fully for it. Be fully present in that practice. Try hard. Working at the practice that fits your body. Right? When you go to work, wear clothes that fit your body now. Even if you used to be smaller or you plan to be bigger or whatever, wear the clothes that fit your body now. Practice is no different. Work the practice. Be present with that, that truth of where your body is. And from the first breath to the fourth breath, as you hold the pose, that place may be different. From the January through April, that pose may be different. Over a decade of practicing, that place may be different. But we're fully present in whatever that pose is that's appropriate and fits the body as we do it. Throw away your fat pants and your skinny pants. Wear the pants that fit you. Offer your right hip back and down. Make sure we're resting lightly in those fingertips so that our legs can't check out of the pose. Right, it's a failure to be present, not a failure to make the shape of the pose. Spine. Hold. Stretch up. Hands together. One more time. Right foot back. So those will start the same. We're going to go from Parjava Tonasana into Pavrita Trikonasana, or Revolve Triangle Pose. So your back foot points um, slightly angled, not exactly to the side, a little bit forward. Hips square to the front. 
And now we're a little bit better at that. Stick your butt out. Well, then you spill your energy from your ego and your pleasure centers. Draw it forward. All right, so now we've got lots of choices for this right hand. The right hand can go on a block next to your foot. can go all the way to the floor next to your foot on the big toe side. If you're more flexible and more experienced, try taking the block over to the pinky toe side or all the way to the mat on the pinky toe side. If your butt begins to swivel and your hips lose their place, if we're sacrificing form, back off. Right? That's trying to jam yourself into skinny pants. Skinny pants that don't fit your body now. You disrespect your body that way. So respect your body. Respect that it's a manifestation of the divine and be with it where it is. And if that means your foot, your hand is on the big toe side, then do that. It's part of being steadfast. Right? Steadfastly, I respond to my edge. And if my edge is here, it's here. If my edge is here, it's here. Right? Going over here when I'm not ready for that is as much a misalignment as going over here when I'm ready for more. Bring your left hand to your hip and ease that left hip back. Roll the right hip down. Unspill the energy from your abs. Lengthen your spine and spiral open to your left. Take your left shoulder back. And if you like, you can lift your left arm toward the ceiling and gaze up at your thumb neck. Remind your muscles to hug. Release into the pose. As you exhale, let the right hip soften back. It's an offering to your edge. To the point where the unmanifest becomes manifest. Where the divine takes on form and shape and quality. And there's a respect and an honor in the form and the shape and the quality that the divine chooses in that moment. And we surrender to that. We add our effort to that. We hug and we undulate our edge. We hug it with effort and surrender and effort and surrender, always hugging closer and closer to that divine edge, to that bright line of manifestation. Bend your knee. Step forward, reach your tailbone, inhale, stretch up, hands together, big breath, and release. One more, arms up, exhale, bow, within your star. Step back with your left leg into high lunge. And then this time, spin your foot down it's parallel to the back of your mat. And we're going to soften this bend in the front knee just a little bit. Bring your elbow up there. Stick out your butt. Scoop your tailbone. Lengthen both side body. And we soften this angle a little bit so we can really stretch the side bodies. Really get a long, long torso and start to turn. So it's not the hips. Right? We already did stick out your butt, scoop your tailbone. Your hips are in a good position. Now twist just above your pubic bone, belly, waistline, rib cage, chest. Now we're going to switch 
Lean on your left elbow. You can put your hands together. Chest, shoulders, shoulders back, throat, nose, eyes, and then flex your spine. Bow into a C spine, engage your abdominals, and curl so that your armpit gets closer to your knee. Bend your front knee. So we're surrendering into the pose. Draw your belly off your thigh, effort. Soften into the twist, surrender. Allow your armpit to fall down closer to your knee. Bring your hands together. Open fully into the twist. Breathe. Honor your edge by undulating about it. Dance around it like ladies around the maypole. Find softness and release with your right hip toward the floor. your butt, scoop your tailbone, lengthen both side bodies, begin your twist from just above your pubic bone, the form of the pose is only important and that we know which way effort is directed. And we know which way to surrender. In child pose. And it's a variation of, of Rita Parashra Konasana, the long side angle pose. And from there, Transition onto your rear end. Spin your inner thighs down. If your hamstrings are tight, of course, elevate yourself from this pose. So it just opens and softens that angle. So it's not so acute and extreme between the thigh bone and the pelvis. And that's going to help keep your back safe as you bow forward. Lengthen your spine. Engage your abdominals and curl forward. Take your shoulders onto your back. Pretend those shoulder blades velcro there onto your back. Stretch your shoulder blades up as if they're hooked to the back. And you're going to lengthen your whole spine. Pull your whole spine long. Bow forward. Plant your shoulder blades on the floor. Windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Keep the opposite shoulder firmly planted, barely engaged, and just gently go side to side to release the spine. Plant your feet. The option to lean your knees together like that to create a little more release in the lower back or if it works 
for you. Stretch your legs all the way out. Shoulders back. Palms up. Keep your eyes closed. to your right side. Honor your body as it is with all the truths it holds, the pretty ones, the gritty ones, the easy ones, the hard ones. closed and lift gently to a comfortable seat. Really honor that moving edge. The bright line that delineates where you are from where you are not. The courage we have to boldly face that moment fully show up, be fully present in it, in its intensity, the kind of comfort that sustains us right there on the edge, and the full brunt of that truth. Love that edge and that place as it comes together with that moment. Both our 
our strength and our softness. Place your hands together in front of your heart and close with one arm. Release your breath. Expand with your inhale. Sharing the power of your presence at your edge for this time. Namaste.